It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Beth Hiley. Game store in Chicago, Illinois. My name is Beth Hiley, and today I'm here to do a rules overview of Mondo. Now, Mondo is going to be published here in the United States by Z Man Games and should come out sometime in the next month of 2011. Now, some of you may cringe. Mondo is a speed tile game, and you might think, oh no, I'm so bad at speed stuff. Or you might be thinking of all those party games where people end up screaming at each other. Well, Mondo definitely takes a nice, clean approach to a speed game. You're going to be grabbing tiles from a communal pile and putting them on your board. So it's very quiet and very tactical. But because there's a large speed element, it can be very intense. So some of you may love it, some of you quite frankly may hate it. But it's worth trying because each round is only at most seven minutes long. So you know you will never spend more than a half hour playing Mondo. It also plays equally well with two, three, or four people because each of you is just filling up your own separate board, but you are going to be drawing from that communal pile. So we're going to look into Mondo and then into a few of the other special quirks that you can add into the, to the other rounds to make it even harder and even more interesting. As I mentioned before, Mondo is a speed tile game. So this is going to be pretty fast and furious. And because of that, there aren't really any turns. Everyone's going to be grabbing tiles at the same time. You're going to play the game in three rounds. You're going to try and completely fill up your board to get as many points and as few errors as possible. And that'll be one round. Then you'll completely clear off your board and start again, and you'll do that a total of three times. And each time they've provided this really lovely score pad so you can score each of your three rounds, and the person with the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner. Now, to keep things from getting too fast and frantic in the middle, you're only allowed to use one hand to grab the tiles. Now, I have a big pile here. All of these tiles are two-sided. There's a side that has only one feature, and then if you flip that over, there's always a combination of more than one on the other side. So if you're looking for a particular tile, you might want to start flipping them over to see if maybe there is a better match on the other side. Or if you're looking for something that's the same on all four sides, again, you probably want to flip it over. Now there are some tiles that have inactive volcanoes and some that have active volcanoes. That might be worth penalty points if you end up with lots of active volcanoes at the end of the round. So that's something else to look out for. Some of these also have animals. Animals are always a good thing, so you might want to start grabbing tiles with animals. And lastly, you want to look for tiles that match the landscapes that you already have. So if you've ever played the game Carcassonne, this is, has a similar feel that you want to match up grass to grass, desert to desert, forest to forest, and water to water. And you'll note that in your starting board here, this entire outer edge is all water. So you would need to match that appropriately. Now, we have a house rule when we play this that you can grab one tile at a time using one hand and bring it over and sort of try it on, see if you like it. And as long as you don't let go, you can put it back. Like I said, that is a house rule, but it is a pretty nice one, if you, particularly if you're playing with people who haven't played before. But once you decide to commit a tile to a location, it is now stuck, and you will never be able to move it for the rest of the round. It's totally okay if tiles get oriented upside down, so you'll notice this ostrich is upside down. That's fine. You mostly want to look for trying to match the appropriate landscapes to each other. Now here's a sample board that I've completed using the rules that we would find in round one. Now round one is the most forgiving round. You're not going to put in any of the extra bonus scoring stuff. We'll talk about that next. And you're also given the most time. So the game comes with this handy dandy world timer. And you're going to give yourself seven minutes for round one. If I'm the first person to finish my board, and if the timer is not run yet, I can grab one of these numbers. You want to grab the biggest number that you can because you're going to get this in bonus points. So if I'm the first one to finish, I'm probably going to grab the four. Now let's say this is what my board looked like when it was done. 
I've actually made this a perfect board. This is air free, just to show you um, what the maximum scoring would be. And then I'll put an air in this to show you what it looks like. Now, all the things that score you points are listed right here along the edge of the board, and they're also mirrored on the score pad as well. They're identical pictures. So starting at the top, there's a picture of an animal with a plus one. Well, that means each animal in your landscape is worth plus one points. It doesn't matter if they are ocean animals or land animals. They're all just plus one, so you'd add all of those up. The second thing is it has a bunch of landscapes pictured, and it says plus two. You're going to get plus two points for each completed error-free landscape. Now, I already said my board was, was a, a, a perfect board, so all of these are completed error-free landscapes, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each one of those is worth two points for a total of 14 points. And you'll notice that I did not count water, and water is not pictured over here, so water does not score you any points. The next thing you get points for is whichever bonus tile you picked up. And you have to grab these before the buzzer to get these bonus points. And once you grab that, you have committed yourself to not adding anything else. If I was the first to finish, I'd probably grab the four, so I get four bonus points. Now the next two tiles are for bonus tiles that only come into play in rounds two and three. So we're going to skip that for the moment. And the last two things are penalty spots. This penalty spot has an active volcano picture and says negative one. So you're going to look at all of your active volcanoes, active only. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to compare that number to everybody else's active volcanoes. If I have the most, then I get that in negative points. I would get negative six. If somebody else has more active volcanoes, I'm safe. Only the person with the most active volcanoes is going to get the penalty. And inactive volcanoes are always okay for this first round. This last spot is the error penalty. Now, I'm going to change this. I would not be able to do this, but just for demonstration purposes, let's say I had exact, uh, accidentally misplaced this uh, half water, half desert tile here, and now there's water and desert touching each other and water and desert touching each other over here. So this one tile actually resulted in two errors. So I would get negative two points. It would also mean that this desert and now this new secondary desert are now incomplete and not error free. So neither one of these would score for that plus two bonus for uh, completed landscapes. Everything else over here would be fine though. Now, if you did not finish, each empty spot is also worth negative one point. So this is just the point where you would uh, total up anything that went wrong. Now, once we finish scoring round one, we're going to clear our board, literally. And for the start of round two, you're actually going to flip your board over. And you'll notice now that the edge has got more diversified. So that's going to make it easier for some, harder for others to try and complete some landscapes. For the second round, we're also going to add in one set of bonus tiles. I'll just lay out a sample of three here. Um, it awards a bonus and a penalty for a different effects. So whoever has the most completed landscapes is going to get plus four points. Whoever has the fewest completed landscapes is going to get minus four points. All of these round two effects are either plus four for the person with the most or the biggest and minus four for the person with the least or the smallest. So this is awarding for the most water features, the most water animals, and there's a few others. So that would just be one of the things that you would total up when you get to your end scoring. Also, playing officially by the rules, you also knock down to six minutes from your original seven to make that one step harder in round two as well. The final round would incorporate all of the bonus, would incorporate one new bonus round from round two. You always put out a new one. In addition, each person is given a personal goal. And they may choose to select some extra personal goals from the middle of the table as the, once the round is beginning. So you could get nine points if you can get three parakeets all within the same error-free forest. You could get seven points if you could get one of each 
animal all within the same error-free planes. And as I mentioned, you could do these in conjunction with whatever level two bonus is out, and you could be grabbing more, uh, more bonuses from the center of the table. There'll be a few extra laid out there as well. If you don't complete these bonuses, however, it is that much in negative points. So only take some of these extra bonuses if you are really positive you can finish. You will be dealt one. You have to try for at least one. But be wary about accepting more than that. The final thing that helps balance out this game is a penalty for whoever was in the first, first place. Whoever had the most points in round one is going to get this tile. And they pretend that all of their inactive volcanoes count as active. So it's just a balancing mechanic to prevent the uh, front runner from getting too far ahead. If someone else is the front runner for, in points for round two, so it's the highest scoring board for that round, then they would get this tile to make it slightly harder for them in round three. Now we found that this rule is actually a great handicap if you have one person who's really played this game a lot and a, a, a whole bunch of other people who haven't, we just give them this rule all the time. <laughs> And again, that's just a house rule to help balance things out. Well, that should give you an idea of how to play Mondo. Now, what's great about this game is that even when you add the full four players, because it's timed, you know that it's never going to take longer than 30 minutes, which is pretty unusual for a board game when you keep adding on more players. And unfortunately, I can't represent very well here by myself the frantic nature to it, but you definitely end up bumpy elbows a lot, which honestly, I think really makes the game entertaining. <laughs> Now, if you're looking for a recommendation along the same lines as Mondo, the number one, the recommendation that jumps to my mind the fastest is Galaxy Trucker. It has the same tile laying element that you get in Mondo, and it's still speed and it's a race against each other, but then once you're done building your spaceship, you're then going to fly it in a race against each other. So it is a lot more complicated and takes longer, but you can basically uh, approach this as Mondo's big brother in space. Now, if you like another speed element, you could try Ricochet Robots, which is pretty much a speed puzzle game where you're trying to find the most efficient move for your robot and the person who figures that out first is going to get the most points. Now, if it's tile laying that you really like, in my uh, overview, I did mention Carcassonne, which is a very well-known tile game, and I'm not going to go into any details on this one. But my favorite tile game is Cities which is pretty much Carcassonne, except on individual boards. Each of you is building your own individual city. So if you like the idea of arranging tiles in strategic ways that get you points, then you should try this game of cities, which is also a nice under 30 minute game if you're looking for something really fast and fun. Now, I dare someone to come down here to Cat and Mouse in Chicago and try me out at Mondo because while some have said that I am extremely good at explaining games, I don't often win, but I am very good at Mondo. I will say that with no false modesty. So come on down to Cat and Mouse, challenge me to this game, and then see if you like it. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.